Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting. I appreciate you being here at the channel today. And for you folks that have not yet done so, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. And if you find the content that I provide beneficial, you know, please hit that like button as well. And then also for you folks that have comments or you have topics that you would like to see explored here on the channel, you know, things you'd like to see talked about that can help you grow and develop your business, you know, please, you know, use the comment section below and let us know what you what you're looking for and what your ideas are on that. Or if you choose, you can email me direct. My email's in the description below. Or you can also hit me up on uh, on Twitter. You can direct message me there at Jim Consultant. So look forward to hearing from you on your, your thoughts, your ideas, and information that you need to help grow and develop your business. Now, our topic for you today is six things every gym owner should know. Six things every gym owner should know, or every aspiring gym owner. If you're getting ready to start something, uh, and we have like, I think six of them in the works right now with, with clients across the uh, across the, uh, the globe uh, that are working to, to grow and build something. So uh, six things that every owner should know. Number one, business apps can be your friend. Business apps can be your friend. Make sure you're using this technology to, to your benefit. I mean, apps for accounting, apps for payroll, for communication, for membership, for recruiting. I mean, the, 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 the list goes on and on and on. And find the ones that are simple and easy to use, but make sure that you use them. Okay. And, you know, I kind of jokingly say a lot of times with clubs, there's kind of two clubs that have, clubs that are out there. There's clubs that don't, don't have apps and there's clubs that have them, but don't use them. Okay. Utilize this technology to make you more efficient and more effective in what you do. These apps can and will be your best friend because, you know, you're trying to, in many ways, trying to duplicate yourself. You're trying to keep costs low and this is going to be a great way to do that. Number two of what every gym owner should know. This is, it has been, and it always will be, this is a numbers game. If I need two sales today, I don't need two people walking in the front door. If I need two sales today, I probably need four people walking in the front door. And if I need four people walking in the front door, I may need eight appointments to get it. This is a business of volume. This is a business of touch points. So we're trying to create volume. This is a numbers game. Don't just think having those small numbers is going to work. You need to get known by as many people as possible. You need to talk and communicate to as many people as possible. We need to set as many uh, appointments as we possibly can. And of course, there's systems that go with this, but this is a numbers game. View it as a numbers game. It's always been that way. It's always going to be that way. You know, the good news is, you know, to make more sales, I mean, ultimately, you just need to talk to a lot of people. And the good news is there is a lot of people out there that we can talk to. Uh, number three, the right people make all the difference. You know, sometimes we underestimate, you know, our staffing and what we do and the importance of getting them trained up and teaching them how to do this and even being able to retain top staff. But I can have two clubs side by side. You know, someone, someone on club A has done a marvelous job of training, teaching, coaching, and creating a, an environment for their folks to be successful. They do great. Another team doesn't do that and they struggle. It's all about your people. I mean, at the end of the day, I think a case can be made. Your people are your brand. You know, whatever brand, whatever people saying about you, whatever they're thinking about you, it comes down to the people. So the people make all the difference. Always be looking, you know, for that next great person. Because if you find them, you probably find a way to bring them on board. But also, we've got to get better at this, okay? And train, train. I can't stress it enough to you, okay? At some level, we're training every day. And as I've mentioned before on some of these other videos, you know, we have a lot of clubs we work with. You know, they use this actual YouTube channel as, uh, as how they train and how they teach their staff, okay? Um, number four, don't forget to plan for contingencies, don't forget to plan for contingencies. I see it all the time. You know, we'll put a you know we'll put a plan together, and it's based on a hundred percent effectiveness. Okay. Well, number one, it's probably never going to be a hundred percent. You know, I, I would put a plan together that allows me to have success if I only have eighty percent effectiveness. Okay. I'm not going to make it depend on a hundred percent. But the other thing that we talk about all the time when it comes to putting together a plan of action is, you know, what kind of roadblocks and setbacks do we anticipate? 
okay? And then what are they? And then if that happens, what is our plan? Because we're not gonna make success an option here, okay? We're going to have success. We're gonna plan for these contingencies. We know there's gonna be roadblocks. We know there's gonna be, uh, um, there's gonna be setbacks. And how are we gonna handle it and how are we gonna, gonna continue to get results, okay? So plan, okay, for contingencies. Know that things are gonna happen whether it be pandemics or hurricanes or tornadoes or the economy is going to drop or it's world events or it's new competition or an employee leaves, those things are all going to happen. Doesn't matter who you are, it's probably all going to happen. But how can you still have success? Okay. And if these are things you need to talk about, you know, we're still offering a 45 minute uh, free uh, strategy session. You know, click that link below. Happy to get that set up for you and talk about how you can handle some of this. Because to give you some examples, you know, in the year 2020, you know, we've had clubs that have broken sales records and done a tremendous job because they were they were ready for. They had contingencies in place. They were ready for roadblocks and setbacks. They knew what that mindset needed to look like. Okay, we needed to make that pivot. And for the folks that were ready, they did it and had a lot of success. Uh, number five, delegate your way to growth. You know, you as an owner, you cannot do everything. Okay, you cannot do everything. And part of our responsibility, whether it be as an owner or if you're a manager, part of our responsibility is to develop other people. Okay, you know, to take our job so that we can go up because we can't go up unless we're developing other people. So delegate your way to growth. You know, hire a staff, delegate when you can. If somebody else can do it, delegate it, okay? Virtually everything, delegate it. They're never gonna get better at it if you don't give them that chance to do it, okay? Give them opportunities, follow up when it's needed. Don't micromanage them, follow up when it's needed, but give them that chance, delegate your way to growth. You, you, you're not gonna be able to maximize your opportunity. You can't do everything yourself. And I, I can speak from personal experience on this. I know when, when I was first getting started as that owner, I mean, I was very hands-on. And certainly the first two clubs I was hands-on. And I, I seemed to pull it off a little bit in retrospect, maybe not as much as I could have. But when we hit club number three, I knew I had to make some changes, in which I did, but you know, could have made them a lot earlier. So delegate your way to growth, okay? And number six, make member service a way of life. We're just not signing people up. You know, I still hear it today. I still hear it today that, hey, we don't care if everybody uses the club or not. Well, yeah, you do, okay? We want everybody to use it. Okay, you know, too many people, they talk about, oh yeah, the industry is based on non-usage. No, it's not, okay? We want people to use it, because guess what? If they're not using it, they're not gonna stick with you. If they're not using it, they're not gonna renew. If they're not using it, not using it they're not gonna bring you a referral. If they're not using it, you're not gonna get personal training from them. If they're not using it, you're not gonna sell retail, okay? If they're not using it, they're not gonna buy supplements. You want them to use it. Make member service a way of life. And you can check out other videos here on the channel where we talk about you know, different ways to do that. But what we want to do, we want to give super service. We want to give more than the customer ever bargained for. Okay? And in many ways, we used to, we used to talk about this a lot back when I was, I was getting started, is we want, to give, we want to give country club service at a health club price. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, so make member service a way of life for you. Let's treat these folks like gold because they are. All right, so folks, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. I appreciate you being here at the channel today. Uh, as always, uh, you know, please hit the subscribe button, hit that like button if you like the content that's provided. And again, if you have topics you'd like me to explore here on the channel, you know, feel free to drop it in the comment section below. Hit me up via email or, you know, direct message me on Twitter at uh, Jim Consultant. Folks, we we'll look forward to seeing y'all on that next video.